In the previous video, we learned about the ref function with which we can replace the data option in a component. In this video, let's take a look at another function which does the same but under a specific scenario. And that is the reactive function. Now to get us started, I've added some code into our data component. In the data option, apart from first name, I've added a last name and a hero name. So we have Bruce, Wayne and Batman. I've used the mustache syntax to bind them to the template, which we can see rendered in the browser. Now let's see how to replace the data option with the reactive function. I'm going to begin by replacing the data option again with the ref function, which we learned about in the previous video. We already have a ref to the first name. Let's create two more for last name and hero name. So C underscore last name is Kent and C underscore hero name is Superman. If we now wanted a greet hero message, then we would have to access the value property on each of these refs. So const greet hero is going to be a string, hello, C underscore first name dot value, followed by last name dot value, also known as C underscore hero name dot value. Let's return all the three values from the setup method so as to use them in the template. Last name, hero name, and the greet hero message. In the template, we have composition followed by first name, last name, and hero name. And in the next line, we have the greet hero message. If I remove the Diana assignment, save the file and go back to the browser. We see Clark, Kent, Superman, and of course the greeting message. Now, although this works great, we do see some repetition. For every property we are creating, we need to invoke the ref function. And when accessing the value or assigning a new value, we would need to have dot value every single time. Wouldn't it be nice if we could avoid this code repetition? Well, this is where the reactive function comes into picture. Let's understand its usage. Begin by importing reactive from view. Within the setup function, let's invoke it. So reactive. Unlike the ref function, reactive accepts an object as its argument. And within the object, we can define the different properties. Let's add first name, last name, and hero name. To save us the time, I'm going to copy paste the three properties. We have princess, Diana, and Wonder Woman. Similar to ref though, reactive does return a reactive reference, which we can store in a constant. So const, and it is sort of a convention to call this as state. Now we can create another greet message using this state constants. So const reactive greet hero is equal to a string, hello, followed by state dot first name, state dot last name, also known as state dot hero name. As you can see, we have eliminated the need to use ref multiple times and the need to use dot value multiple times. Let's return state and reactive hero from the setup method. In the template, we now have to bind state dot first name, state dot last name, and state dot hero name. And of course, the reactive greet hero string. If we now save the file and go back to the browser, we have Princess, Diana, Wonder Woman, 
and of course the greeting. So this is pretty much how you can use the reactive function instead of the data option in a component. And you would be pleasantly surprised to learn that the data option internally uses the reactive function. Now at this point, I'm pretty sure you're asking yourself if both ref and reactive functions provide a way to store data and allow that data to be reactive, when should I use one over the other? Now I would say there are two key points to answer that question. The first point is use ref function when dealing with primitive types like string, boolean, number, and so on, as reactive can only accept an object. For example, let's say we would need to create a component which has only one property to manage called is logged in of type boolean. So we would say const is logged in is equal to ref with an initial value of false. We can't do the same with reactive function as it accepts only an object. Of course, you can wrap the boolean value in an object. So const is logged in reactive is equal to the reactive function and we pass in an object with a property called value initialized to false. But if you do this, you have simply reinvented the ref function. So if dealing with primitives, go with ref as reactive accepts only objects and we don't want to reinvent the ref function. The second point sort of relates to the example we have just seen in this video. When you have a lot of primitive types, but they all seem logically related, like a first name, last name, age, occupation, and so on, you could simply bundle them into an object and store it in a constant called profile, for example, using the reactive function. Doing so will avoid the need to call ref multiple times within the setup function. So a good use case for reactive is when a group of primitives belong together, like the example we have here in our component. So that is about how the ref and reactive functions, which are part of the composition API, can be used to replace the data option from the options API when building a component. Now all along, I've been telling that ref and reactive return a reactive reference. But what exactly do we mean by a reactive reference? Let's understand that in the next video, along with a small improvement we can do to our code. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.